<sighs> yeah. What's going on? I really... I'm just chilling. <laughs> 1689. Yeah, bro. D1. What's going on, y'all? Man. Vision. What up, though? What up, though? I, I, I was, I was going to try to... Man. I was going to try to just chill. Get ready for this game tonight. Yeah, he from North. Get your people, man. Get your people. 1689. Send them to your seminary, bro. I know, I know we differ on eschatology, but bro, at this point, help him out, man. Bro, help him out, bro. Pray for that dude, bro, for real. Mercury, hello. How are you? What's up, Candace Acy? What's going on? What's going on, twelve twenty nine? What's happening? Listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm in my room. I'm chilling. Man, pray for D1. Pray for CHH. Pray for these dudes, bro. If I hear another artist, if I hear another artist use Mark 2, 15 to 17 to try to justify their mess and to justify their sin and collaborating with the wicked, I am going to flip out. Straight up, real talk. This, this is, man... Just go to my Twitter page, dude. Just go to my Twitter page. D1, uh, uh, K Swift, M2. Man, if that's the only text you guys can use, listen, can y'all go ahead and share this scope right now? Go ahead and share this scope. So I'm pretty sure you guys got some people that are on your that are on your you know your Facebook page or that are on your Periscope. Yeah, Clint Kelly, man, that's all these cats got, man. That that's that's the weakest text anybody can use. To justify collaborating with the wicked. Does not the Bible interpret itself? Does not scripture interpret itself? So so now basically you're opening up a can of worms to justify all kind of foolishness. So Jesus ate with sinners. Last time I checked, eating with an unbeliever is not sinful. But collaborating with unbelievers are. Collaborating with unbelievers in music, in ministry, in marriage, those things are sinful. Does not Second Corinthians six fourteen through seventeen tell us clearly that we are not to yoke ourselves together with unbelievers? Uh, hold on, let me go ahead and yeah, because I'm about to block that out right now. You, <laughs> you, you gone. Anyway, do I don't you collaborate with them at work? No, I don't collaborate with the unbeliever. That's a job. You know what I'm saying? Me going me going to work, I'm working for someone. I'm not partnering with the CEO. There, there's not a shared there's not a shared effort uh with that. Um CEOs don't ask me what I believe and what I think about what they want to do. I have not been to not one board meeting at my job to decide how profits are going to be distributed. So, and here's another thing. Chris, you guys got to ask yourself the question. What is the purpose of music? What is the purpose of music? And who is music for? Because the purpose of music, number one, is to exalt God. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Music is also for the edification of the believer. So, if music is for the edification of the believer, Colossians 3 tells us that, that we are to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. So we are, we are, we are number one, collectively coming together to worship God, to exalt God through music, because that's the whole purpose of what music was made for. Music was never meant to be used as an evangelistic tool. This is, this is, why, this is why I'm saying... Where are where are these artists getting their theology from? I mean, who are these people's pastors? Who, who are these people's pastors? I mean, wh where are they getting their information from? Mm -hmm. No, no. If you work as a pianist, your job is to exalt God in your musicianship. If the person isn't a Christian, should I say no? Yeah, you should say no. 
Light and darkness does not collaborate, does not partner. What, what do you have to give them? So, I mean, who, were the, who was the psalm was written by? And who was it for? Matter of fact, the Bible says all scriptures is inspired by God. So if all scriptures is inspired by God, and he used holy men to write it, then we can't, we can't justify using God's music, because it belongs to God. God is the one who created it. Satan is the one who copycats and who perverts it. So, you see, I play in a band of orchestra for music concerts, and I'm not allowed to play with them. The point I'm making, Chris, is this. You're not to collaborate with the wicked. Bottom line, point blank period in the subject. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 17 makes it clear that we are not to partner with the wicked in music, in ministry, in marriage. My thing is this. Why are we so lazy? Why, why, are, why are Christian artists so lazy? It's like, get off your behinds and use the gifts that God has given to you to be a blessing to his people and to bless his name. I mean, what... what do you have to have the ungodly, the wicked to help you do things for the glory and honor? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah exactly, Clem. It's no money. And so it's like, I, I, I've never seen so many lazy artists who want to try to get on with secular cats. The Bible says you're strengthening the hands of the wicked when you do that. So, for the life of me, stop using Mark 2. 15 through 17, which basically says this. <sighs> it came up and it happened that he was reclining at the table to my Jesus in his house. And many tax collectors and sinners were dining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many of them and they were following him. Stop right there. Here's the question. The text said that Jesus was reclining uh, in the house and he was he was reclining in the, in the house of the, uh, the tax collector. Right now, here's the thing. The text shit clearly shows us that sinners were dining with Jesus, for there were many of them, and they were following him. Notice, sinners were following Jesus. Jesus was not following sinners. These artists, these so-called quote-unquote Christian artists, Christian hip-hop artists, are following sinners. Sinners are not following you. you. You act like basically spiritual whores. You are jumping on their bandwagon. You are trying to get on their songs. You are trying to, you know, get them to get your attention. Oh, look at me. Follow me. I'm on Twitter. Follow me. Follow me, so and so. Follow me, so and so. That's what that's what cheerleaders do. I don't understand how grown men act like women when y'all that's what you're acting like. You act like women. You act like cheerleaders when you do that. Jesus never chased after anybody. They came running to see him. And number one, the spirit of God draws. Your bars don't draw anybody. And some of you guys' bars are kind of weak anyway. It's puppy pee, in my opinion. But I'm just saying. Verse 16 says, When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, stop right there, eating with tax collectors. Notice they were not in the booth. They were not on stage, hugged up, booed up, dapped up. He never partnered with them in any type of ministry pursuit. But some of you artists basically think that if you get uh, Lupe, like D1, get Lupe on his track, that that is supposed to, you know, win him to Christ. That just shows you guys. Some of you guys act like Arminians. Yeah, I said it. I said it. You don't believe that God is sovereign. Because if you believe that God is sovereign, then you would do what the sovereign Lord of the universe tells you to do. You, 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 you say that God is sovereign, but you act like Arminians when it's time to preach the gospel. Yeah, it's bad to be Arminian when you think that you have the power to save somebody other than the Spirit of God. Last time I checked, Jonah says salvation is of the Lord. Listen, I know even when I preach, when I preach the gospel, if the Spirit of God is not doing the work to draw sinners to himself, it is not going to be successful at all yeah big crit was another dope head so you got a person who, pr who promotes dope and cocaine and you got a person that is a five percenter wonderful combination d1 wonderful combination
absolutely great. Appreciate that. What you're saying. No, Calvinism is not the only truth, but Calvinism is truth when it comes to salvation. I mean, if you believe that Jesus needs our help to save somebody, then that is humanism. But anyway, let me get back to my point, because Chris, you can hit me up. You already got my number, bro. Don't go there. Um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to sinners, when it comes to giving people the gospel, a lot of you artists don't really believe that salvation is of the Lord. You believe salvation is of your sound scan. You believe that salvation is of YouTube. Salvation is of your clicks and salvation is of your I, iTunes uh, you know, numbers. That's what you believe. Because if you believe that salvation is of the Lord, then you are preaching, and teaching, and act like it. You would have your music to represent Christ and you would have your music to be directed to the body of Christ. But since you don't believe that, you believe that if I have this person on my track <clears throat> or if I make less mention of Jesus and more mention of the art, then people won't really recognize that I'm a Christian and then they'll, you know, they'll they'll gravitate to what I'm saying. That is Arminianism, that is humanism, that is pragmatism, and bottom line, that is the flesh being honored and glorified and not God. God says this in his word. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, not if you be lifted up, not if your bars be lifted up, not if your wordplay be lifted up. He says, if I be lifted up, Jesus, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Who are you drawing people to? Absolutely. What you win them with is what you win them to. Absolutely. You draw people by your quote unquote word skills and games. And here's a funny thing. Paul says this, and he asked a rhetorical question in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, I believe. He says, what do you have that you didn't receive? And if you receive it, why are you acting as if you did not receive it? He says, it, in him we live, move, and have our being. He told the men on, in, on, in Acts 17, <clears throat> on the road to Athens. He told them, this is, listen, nothing that we have, we need to be boasting about anyway. So, what if he would be lifted up through your words? Well, he, they're supposed to be lifted up through the word of the preached gospel. That's what they're supposed to be lifted up through. Again, you can't show me in scripture where God used music to save anybody. We act as if music was never around in the first century. We act as if music was never present when Jesus was alive. On this earth, that is. That's, that's how we act. We act as if music is a 21st century concept. We act as if if we don't preach the gospel, then how can they be saved? Well, my Bible tells me in Romans 10, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach unless he be sent? He didn't say, how can they hear without an artist? He says, how can they hear without a preacher? So, my contention with a lot of you artists is you're using Mark 2.15 to 17 because you don't really know the gospel. You don't know the gospel. What you know <clears throat> is games. Because to use this text is eisegesis, straight up, eisegesis. Verse 17, verse 17 or let me go to verse 16. It says, when the scribes and Pharisees saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, they were talking to Jesus' disciples. These scribes and Pharisees uh, were not believers. They were not followers of Christ. These were the haters, okay? So let me say this as well. Um, you see HH artists and 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 quote unquote Christian artists, quit trying, to, quit trying to trying to call people like me Pharisees because we're calling what you're doing sin. The Pharisees were the ones that were attacking Jesus. No, we're attacking your unchristlike behavior. That's what we're attacking. People like me. Uh, so Pharisees are not believers. I'm a believer. I'm a born again, blood bought, spirit filled believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, who believe that salvation is of the Lord, who believe that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's who I believe. What do you believe? Quit trying to use that, that little game of trying to call people who are calling your mess into question and calling you into repentance Pharisees. No, no, no. Pharisees was against the kingdom. I'm not against God's kingdom. The question is, whose kingdom are you against? Because you're not a, you're not a part of God's kingdom if you are leading people into carnality, leading people into licentiousness, leading people into worldliness and sin. You're the enemy of the cross. 
My Bible tells me in Matthew 18, verse 6, that if I cause any one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it is better for me to have a millstone tied around my neck and I be drowned in the depths of the sea. Do you understand what Jesus is saying when he tells us that if I cause someone to sin and to fall into debauchery and to fall into worldliness? He says you're better off dead if you do that. I know they don't understand that. I know they don't understand that. So to call somebody like me a Pharisee because I'm calling your stuff into question and telling you to repent, the question you need to ask yourself is, who are you following? Because you can't be following Jesus. And both of us cannot be right about this issue here if one of us is leading somebody into sin. So the text says this. The Pharisees approach the disciples of Jesus and says, why is he eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. I did not call or did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now notice, there's nothing sinful about eating with unbelievers. Nothing sinful at all. But you know what? Every unbeliever that you and I have, they should be our evangelism project, not our collaboration project. Did you hear what I just said? Every unbeliever, I don't care if it's your mother, I don't care if it's your co-worker, every, any unbeliever, any person that's in your life, in my life, that has not made Christ their Savior and Lord, that is our evangelism pro project. That is not our collaboration project. You don't see Jesus saying, man, if I can get Pilate to, you know, to come on my team, then we can get these taxes reversed and we don't have to worry about paying any taxes. No, no, no. If I can get Caesar, if I can get all these wicked leaders just to, just to, just to come on my ministry uh, team and then we can try to, we can overthrow Rome. Never, never, ever, 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 ever. Jesus came for the purpose of saving the lost. He is a savior by nature. That's all he came to do. He says, I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. And some translation says to repentance, but it's not, in, it's not in the original manuscripts that we have in our Bibles. So, my question is, is this. Why are some of you guys allowing these artists to use Mark 2, 15 through 17 as justification to partner, with, to collaborate with the wicked? Because here's the question you can ask yourself. If they can collaborate with the wicked in music, then they might as well marry them too, right? I mean, why, why stop there? Go ahead and walk down the aisle and marry darkness. Go ahead and walk down the aisle and have children by them. I mean, just go ahead. Why, why stop with music? Go on and marry them. Go ahead and marry darkness. Go ahead and partner with darkness. Go ahead and say, I do, to Satan. That's, that's, that's the epitome of collaborating, if you, if you ask me. So, Mark 2, 15-17 has nothing to do with collaborating with the wicked. Listen, when you see people like D1 and people like K Swift and, and and these other artists trying to use this text, you already know they're not being discipled. They're not. And I'll say that straight up to them. They're, they're not being discipled by godly men. And again, who are these people's pastors? Have, have, have any of you, do any of you know who these people's pastors are? What churches do these dudes go to? But they're so quick to go to legacy conferences and so quick to go to this conference and that conference. I'm like, and the, and notice, just to talk about hip hop, which is nothing holy about hip hop. But you want to tag Christ's name to a godless system, to a godless culture. Yeah, yeah, you don't need one when you have an honorary degree like the Craig. Yeah, I mean, but you know what? For me, my question is, what are we going to do? The remnant. When you see this stuff, stop supporting these people, man. I stopped supporting these artists a long time ago. Long. What's wrong with Lecrae? Wicked. What's, long, what's wrong with Lecrae? He supports artists like Bad Christian Podcast. If you pull up Bad Christian Podcast and pull up an interview by Lecrae, he supports Christians, quote-unquote Christians, cursing and using all kind of profane language. He supports people like Big Crit, Kendrick Lamar. So forth and so on. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But my, 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 my thing is not about Lecrae. Lecrae, is, he, he's Demas. I call him Lucifer. He's a personification of that. Shane Buckets, hit me up on, on, uh, on, my, on my email. SecoWoods at Yahoo.com. 
Seiko Woods at Yahoo.com. S A I K O Woods at Yahoo.com. We can have a conversation about that. And let me say this too before I go because I smell my food. It's, it's smelling delicious. Um, I've already reached out to a lot of these artists. <clears throat> Bro, I call him Lucifer because that's what it is. Chris, hit me up, bro. Come on, dude. You already know how I get down. Come on. Why are you defending them is the question, Chris. You already know that. Why Why? Why are you... Okay, let me ask you this question, Chris. Let me ask you this question, Chris. Let me ask you this question. Chris, if I was selling dope to your children, or if I... Yeah, you are defending them. You're defending them. Um, if I was selling dope to your children or molesting your children, what would you call me? Would you just say I'm wrong? Would you say I'm a pedophile? Would you say I'm 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 a dope dealer? Besides being a sinner. That, see, a sinner's too broad. No, no, no. A sinner's too broad, Chris. Come on, let's 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 keep it one hundred right now. If we're gonna have a conversation, let's have a conversation. What would you call a person who molests children? What would you call them? You wouldn't just call them a sinner. You would call them, thank you. You would call them a pedophile, but what else would you call them? Who's driving that person to pedophilia? Who's driving what would you call Eddie Long? Is Eddie Long? Is Eddie Long a demon? Why isn't why isn't he the devil? Have you ever have you ever read the story of King Tyre and the King of Babylon in Isaiah fourteen and, and, and also in Ezekiel twenty eight? Who's driving me to sin? My flesh. But here's the kid the thing, Chris. Here's the question, Chris. If I'm born again of the Spirit of God, see you you see you're too afraid to call him what he is. If Jesus called the Pharisees. You are of your father, the devil. And if Jesus told uh, told uh, Peter, when Peter was trying to stop Jesus from going to the cross, he told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter had a moment where he tripped out and Jesus called him Satan. Why can I not call Lecrae? What he's been manifesting as for the past six, seven years. Tell me why. Give me a book, chapter, and verse and tell me why I can't do that. And see, here's the hit, and this is the problem. I love you, Chris, but you're wrong. There's two left shoes on a on a on a on an amputee. Because until you guys that are in this genre called Christian rap call this stuff what it is, then you're not going to deal with it. So when you send, can, brother, you can't call me Satan because I'm not living in a pattern of life of sin. Now. Show me where I'm living a pattern of life of sin, and I'll take that. I'll take that title as it is. But until then, let's not get on the transvan bus and start being sensitive and start saying that this dude is not doing what he's doing. You don't have to get to know me closer. You don't have to get to know me closer. You can look at what I'm doing. Show me book, chapter, and verse where I am. Following the patterns of the evil one, because when I read my Bible, I just I just turn to it. Matter of fact, I just go right there. I mean, my since I'm already here, you can't see. I can't see. Chris, come on, dude. Okay, dude, are, are you sleepy? Are you sleepy right now? Because you're really tripping, bro. You 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 know me enough to know that I'm not walking around in no blatant sin and walking around as a pattern of life of sin. You you should know that, bro. Come on, dude. This this ain't nobody that you have not talked to over the phone. This ain't nobody that you had not have not have had not had conversations about, bro. Come on now, let's just let's just come on, come on, bro, come on. Don't don't do me like that. Not me. I ain't that one. Take that to reach. Take that to somebody over there. Take that to Minio and and all the mother cats, bro. This me. I'm not walking around here playing games with people's souls, doc. I don't get down like that. First John chapter three, verse nine. No one who is born of God practices sin. Hmm. That's in the present active indicative. That means it's a pattern of life, Chris. That means a person who is born of God, who has been born by the Spirit of God, does not practice sin as a pattern and habit of life. He says, why? Because his seed abides in him. What, what kind of seed abides in the believer? The person who's been born of God, the person who belongs to God, the person who has the seed, the, the sperma of, of God. That's who belongs to God. So now, he says, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil, uh-oh, are obvious. The children of God versus the children of the devil are obvious. What's so obvious about that, John? John tells us, anyone 
who does not practice righteousness is not of God. So there's only two different worlds that we belong in. One or the two. You can't belong in both. Either you're going to belong to God or you're going to belong to Satan. He says clearly, but this is the children of God and children of the devil are obvious. Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. And that word practice again is in the present active voice. And it's in a part of simple phrase. This is now a not only have you done it, but you are continuing to do this as a pattern of life. No, that does not make us all Satan, bro. I mean, do y'all not read the scriptures? I don't practice sin. That's the key word. I don't practice sin as a pattern of life. In fact, Jesus makes it clear that those who belong to him will bear fruit. More fruit, much fruit. He says he saved us to produce fruit. Yeah, you need to hit me up, Chris, and have your Bible ready, Doc. You know how I get down. So anyway, my question is, is this. Why are you guys supporting artists who collaborate with the wicked? And if they collaborate with the wicked, and this is their pattern of life, then... Why would you and I not call these people emissaries of Satan? Just asking. Just asking. I, I don't see in Scripture any good result of anybody that professes to be a Christian and leads people away into sin. No, you're not asking a question, Chris. You're asking more than a question. Because you, you already know. You should already know this by now. We, we've already had these conversations, dog. This is not more than a question, but that's fine. I'm not even defending. I'm just saying. So would you would you basically tell me that a person can profess to be a Christian and live any kind of way they want? I mean, that's that's. Would it be a hostile debate, though? I'm not. Anyway, um, well, see, if you get confused about it, that's one thing. But to say that I'm wrong for calling the cray Lucifer. That's not that's not confusion. You commit you, you basically communicated that I'm basically slandering this guy. In so many words, that's just basically saying he's I, mean, I, I don't have a right to call him Lucifer. What what am I supposed to call him? If you read Isaiah 14 and, and, and Ezekiel 28, God gives personifications of two people, human beings, as being Lucifer. Because of what they have done. And because of what they do. I, I am gonna call him that. That's what he. That's what he is. I mean, what am I? What am I supposed to call him? I mean, have you? Have do you? Do you listen to bad Christian podcasts? Have you even listened to that that program? To that to that godless show? Have you listened to bad Christian podcasts? You haven't. Okay, Chris, I would encourage you, brother. I would encourage you to listen to that program and then call me. Okay, promise me you do that first. Promise me you do that first. If you've been tracking with Lecrae. Wait a minute, hold on. You don't listen to Cray, you don't listen to the Cray anymore. And I'm telling you what this man has been doing, but I'm wrong for calling him Lucifer? Doc, listen to bad listen to bad Christian podcast and then hit me up. Okay? For real. It's all love. It's all love. But Mark two fifteen through seventeen, you guys. Stop allowing these people to twist God's word, the very word that we hold dear to our hearts. To justify collaborating with the wicked. Stop allowing them to do that. Because all that does is feed more foolishness into the plumb line and the body of Christ. That, that's what it does. And so for me, this is nothing personal. This is all biblical. And this is what I share with D1. And I asked D1 the question on Twitter. I said, bro. Show me scripture to justify you collaborating with the wicked. This dude pulls up Mark 2, 15 to 17. I'm like, bro, what does eating have to do with collaborating with the wicked? Where do you see Jesus having these sinners on his ministry team? Having these, he didn't even number them among the apostles. Matter of fact, even when Jesus called the 70, he called the 70 and the 70 belonged to him. So, I mean, come on, y'all. Let's, let's just read our Bibles, man. That's, that's. Listen, you don't have to have a PhD in theology just to know what don't do this. Thou shalt not. Do not do this. That's basic English. That's basic English comprehension. 
If God says don't do it, then don't do it. It's not that deep. We, we, we're just being dumb and thinking that we are deep by trying to make the word of God mean more than what it says. And really what that is, that's Gnosticism. That's Gnosticism. That's that secret knowledge. That's that secret this. No, well, here's the thing. It's not a sin to eat with sinners. That's not the point I'm making. We see that clearly. The sin is when people try to make eating with sinners justification for collaborating in music or collaborating in business or collaborating in marriage or joining together with marriage with these people. That's what makes it sin. Which gospel artist is not Lucifer? Well, there's a few of them that are not. And as a matter of fact, not only is there a few of them that are not, but anybody that lives righteously, anybody that lives righteously is not of the of the devil. Signing absolutely. Give you some names: uh, BSAC, Biblically Sound Artist Coalition, uh, Mouthpiece. Uh, I mean. Tone Spain, Douglas Rogers, uh, Path to Revelation, uh, Ike Todd, um, Eshan Burgundy. Um, I mean, I gave you, I gave you a few right there. Now I would even say Biz. I'm not. Yeah, I, even though even though I have issues with Bizzle, he has issues with me biblically. I'm not gonna call Bizzle an emissary of, of of Satan because he's not. You know what I'm saying? So, what about coaching sports? Coaching sports has nothing to do with that. We, we, the, coaching sports said that's not that's not partnering. You don't own a team. You're coaching them. You're playing football or kicking a ball or shooting the ball or hitting the ball. So it's not that's not even an issue. Um, so all I'm saying is this: Let's let Scripture say what Scripture says. Do unto others, love your enemy. Okay. That has nothing to do with collaborating with them. That I, I love, I love my enemies. That does not, not mean I'm going to marry them and to collaborate and join forces with them. Listen, even Jehoshaphat got rebuked in Second Chronicles 19 for partnering with Ahab in the military conquest. God rebuked Jehoshaphat by the prophet Jehu. In 2 Chronicles 19, 2, he said, should you help the ungodly and love those who hate the Lord? Now, that was just them battling a common enemy. And God rebuked Jehoshaphat, who was a righteous king, for collaborating with the most wicked king, wickedest king in Israel's history. And God judged and rebuked Jehoshaphat. For doing that, for going to war, for partnering and going to war with another king to fight a common enemy of both of them. And God rebuked them. God judged them. So now, if God does that, then what, what do you think? And how do you think we ought to respond? So, I'm done. I just wanted to share that with you guys. It's 7 o'clock. Get ready for this game in another hour or so. And get my grub on. Hope everybody had a great week so far. And, and hopefully have a safe weekend. It's been raining out here in Texas. Pray for those who have been affected by that flood and, and, and the flooding waters out here and, and elsewhere. Um, so, again, I just want to, again, admonish, encourage. You know what I'm saying? God has called us to be holy, man. He has not called us to be hellish. He's called us to be holy. That means that we are to be separate, distinct from the world. We're to be salt and light. Yeah, I saw Jamal go that idiot. Um, he's a fool. And uh, I pray that God shuts his mouth permanently, straight up. I really do. But anyway, yeah, keep me lifted in prayer. Um, you want to hit me up offline, you can do that. Um, Seiko Woods, S-A-I-K-O Woods with an S at Yahoo.com. You can hit me up. You want to dialogue? You can do that. We can have that conversation over the phone. And yeah, I reached out to uh, D1. I reached out to K Swift. I gave both of my email. I said, hey man, let's have a conversation. And I've yet to receive correspondence from them uh, offline. So, you know, D1 says he's too busy. But yeah, 
K drama. Thank you. Not K Swift. K drama. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Real Emperor. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah, so I meant to say K, not K Swift. K drama. K drama is the one that uh, that's on the Twitter page. He and um, and D one. And uh, you know, and and really, to be honest with you, uh, I was going to talk about this earlier, but you know, if you see my earlier tweets, I had a conversation, just a brief, brief conversation with uh, with Sinbad. You know, he asked, why am I considered the number one enemy of CHH? He said, man, what's that about? And so I explained it to him why, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with that cat as well, too, and uh, and dialogue with him. But you know what? It's not about me. This is about the kingdom. This is about God's truth. And whoever will listen, I am going to I am going to, you know, reach out and have that conversation uh, with them. So anyway. Uh yeah, actually, Chipman, I have to, I would have to, you know, have you email me, man, because I, I, I'm not able to to type that out. So it's uh, Seiko S A I K O Woods with an S at Yahoo dot com. All right. So I'm out of here, guys. Y'all have a great one. And um, if nothing else, yeah. Pro- <laughs> hey, bro, you're probably right. <laughs> you, you, you're probably right, man. You're probably right. I probably have, but it's all love, man. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about us doing the work of God. Um, and, 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 uh, appreciate what, uh, those brothers have been doing. So yeah, uh, let's see 45. Appreciate you. Thank you for that. And, uh, appreciate the encouragement. So anyway, you guys, I'm out of here. Um, uh, have a great one and love winning. See you soon. If anything else doesn't happen, y'all know the drill. Do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless.